Wednesday, 6th of May. For my daily exercise, well, exercise three or four times a week, David and I have been going Nordic walking in Thetford Forest. We've got our Nordic walking poles and we go for an hour and we take different routes through the blocks of trees. If you know anything about the cultivated part of Thetford Forest, you know it's laid out in blocks of trees and you can walk between the rows and you can walk around the blocks. And I've been surprised on my journey by just how many fallen trees there are. Trees in a block, in a row, that have just fallen over. And when you take a look, you can see the great cavernous hole where the roots were, but clearly somehow the roots haven't been deep enough or strong enough to hold the tree. And they're frequently in the middle of a block, so it doesn't seem like there's some great wind that has, that has come along because all the other trees are still standing. And sometimes there's a white substance that fills that hole where the roots were. Is it the soil? I don't know enough about it. Is it disease? I don't know. But something has attacked the roots or somehow the roots haven't been strong enough to keep the tree standing. Jeremiah 17, 8 says of a tree planted by the water, it does not fear when heat comes, its leaves are always green, it has no worries in a year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. Rooted by streams of living water brings life and strength. So today as we think about the vine, we're going to be thinking about roots. I should explain of this book that there are 29 chapters that follow the season of a vine from early spring all the way through to winter. Don't worry, I'm not going through all 29 chapters. But it draws out spiritual lessons from every stage in the vine's growth. And like I say, today we're thinking about roots. Wayne Jacobson explains that his father's vineyard was in a place where there it was, it was desert-like conditions and in fact it says there was rarely rain between mid-May and November so anything that grew there including vineyards had to be watered and he describes it like this my father irrigated his vines every three or four weeks depending on the severity of the heat and he didn't just sprinkle water on the surface he deep watered by flooding the fields. Deep watering forces the root to grow deep instead of loitering near the surface. This not only keeps them well nourished until the next irrigation, but also helps anchor the vines firmly and gives them greater breadth for drawing needed nutrients from the soil. You see, as the flooded fields were filled, gradually the surface water would dry up, but the deep water would sink into the soil. And as the surface dried, the roots would have to go deeper and deeper to find that water. And so the roots grew deeper and the anchor became stronger. I think what are two of us are discovering how deep our roots are in this lockdown. You see, we're missing companionship. We're missing the corporate nature of church and fellowship. Tea and coffee and cake. Nazarenes don't do anything without cake. But also worship together, discussion together, 
Bible study together, preaching that is provided for us and gives us something to chew on, hopefully, during the week. That's part of the reason I do these thoughts for the day, just to keep us connected and give us something to think about. But it also may make us realise that when we're left on our own, when there's just us and maybe we're not even searching online, good old Google, maybe if there was just us, how deep are our roots? How well do we function how well do we draw on the nourishment of the word of god how well do we worship when we're on our own or just with one or two others because that's how we know how well connected we are to the father to jesus through the vine is that in the dark times, in the lean times, in the desert sun, when things are tough, our roots hold. The sap can get through to our branch. We can still hold long enough for the sun to come out and ripen the fruit and for it to grow. Are our roots deep enough. Wayne Jacobson gives an interesting description of the truth of what church can be like. How do we develop deep roots? For a plant it happens quite naturally. The sun dries out the soil from the top down. As the abundance of surface water vanishes, the roots keep looking for it so they grow deeper where the soil has not dried out yet. The same is true for us. When worship at church seems mundane, instead of blaming the worship leaders, we need to seek God more fervently, past the goosebumps and the heart flutters, digging for the treasure of his true presence. When Bible reading or prayer time seems difficult and lifeless, instead of giving up, we can seek him more diligently, making sure it is our heart that is reaching out to him, not just habit or our works. If our Christian fellowship has grown sour or stale, we can press through with honest sharing, humble forgiveness and encouragement from the word so that our focus is centred on him. In all our seeking, we must, we must remember the gardener. He has promised he will always provide enough water for his vines. He says, I, the Lord, watch over it. I water it continually. Isaiah 27, 3. You know, I'm not denying that this time can be tough and it can be hard and can seem like a desert time. But the truth is, God has promised to water his vine. But maybe our roots need to go seeking for that water, need to go deeper need to spend time searching for what it is God wants to teach us. And then, and then when we touch in his presence, when we tap into his presence, our thirst will be quenched and we can begin to grow stronger, deeply rooted. We can resist temptation. We can withstand the winds that blow and whatever comes against us. And more than that, I firmly believe that if we can take this opportunity, when we're separated from each other, to let our tap roots go deep, then when we get back together, each individually, when we become church 
gathered once more. What a church it will be. What a celebration we'll have. What lessons we'll have to teach one another. And what a witness we can be to the community around where we have been planted. When we can show that as his vine we have grown and thrived even through the desert time. Because his spirit has watered us and our roots have gone deep. I wonder how deep your roots are. Are you in danger of toppling over? If you are, reach out, find someone, find something, even on Google, or just spend time acknowledging that you need to seek the living water. Let's go deeper so that we're standing stronger when the right time comes to thrive. That's my thought for today. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.